It sort of, it kind of feels like I feel so tempted to um, to believe that I'm kind of this innocent one that's being <laughs> judged or attacked, and it's kind of like I just see it kind of playing out over and over. And um, you know, it's, there's been other characters in the past, but it's sort of at the moment it feels like it's something that I'm playing to Pete. And I, I kind of um, I'd love to hear you know if you've got anything to say around even sort of some general ideas around that. Or but yeah, attack thoughts, attack thoughts are kept as long as there's a distinction made between them. So just like when you're going through this life and human experience seems to be, there seems to be an inner world, an inner emotional world that we'll say within the human being and there seems to be an external world that's out there. So that's one of the most basic uh, dualities in experience for human beings. There's an inner world and there's an outer world. And oftentimes people feel like like their inner world is extremely chaotic and there's a, a chaotic outer world and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of connection between them. And there we could say there are judgments and attack thoughts that come up in awareness and then there seems to be those that are acted out in the external world. It's very important to the ego that there be a, a distinction there, because to the ego, uh, there's a big, huge distinction between being the victim of attack and being the attacker. You know, you can see it, it plays out throughout society, you know, there's a big difference, whether it's you're watching television shows or crime shows or dramas or whatever between the perpetrator, the attacker, and the innocent victim. In fact, the ego made this whole construct up and this whole cosmos up to just reinforce the difference between the attacker and the attackee. Uh, why? Because, because the ego itself is the attack thought. The ego itself is the belief that you can separate from the Creator. And it's like a little spider tucked away in the web. It doesn't want you ever to find it. Because once you find it, and you release it, then the game's over. The whole giant smokescreen is over. The whole big drama, the big giant drama is over. And, you know, there's a, a song that Kenny Loggins did, which the lyrics are, Who's right, who's wrong, when love is gone? You know, to, to the ego, it's a big deal of who's right, who's wrong. Who made the attack? Who was unjustly treated? Uh, it, it made this whole system up, and even within its system, then it, it, it invents its own sense of forgiveness. Like, uh, like, the victim is the one that should have the pity, and the victimizer is the one that should have the anger, or that, that forgiveness should rest on one or the other. The one that was done wrong should be apologized to, or should be uh, forgiven. Uh, there's a big, huge distinction between this, and there's a part in A Course in Miracles in the workbook where Jesus says, that if you're willing to see that they're both the same, then you'll be ready to let it go. But as long as you maintain that difference between the attacker and the attackee, then it just sets in, it kind of this sets this in motion over and over and over where the drama will just continue to play out and play out because the realization has become clear that an attack thought is just an attack thought and it's just an opportunity for release. For healing release. But there's
there's no distinction between attacker and attacky. So, you know, when you go deeper into consciousness and deeper into awareness, you'll find that the forgiveness lessons get more and more general. The right now it can seem to be very specific, and yet the deeper you go inside, you start to feel this, this anger down there that's a non-specified, a non-specific anger. It, it gets further and further away from the world, and you start to realize, wow, I've got to deal with this anger in my mind. I've got an inner rage, something I must deal with. And the impetus then becomes to let it go. That's why the mystics and saints have kind of written about the dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul comes when you start to realize that, that there's nothing in the world of form that has anything to do with that anger. Uh, there's nothing that you can change in the world of form that's going to alleviate that anger. You have to literally like go through it on the inside. You've got to kind of like cough it up and spit it out <laughs> to be free of it. But there's n nothing needs to change in the world. Uh, nothing needs to change in the environment. People don't need to change. It's just the entire perception changes when you bring it up and you release it. And and it's just not pretty. Uh, when you <laughs> say, Ali Ali Income Free, okay, <laughs> darkness, uh, I give you full permission come to come on out of your hiding space, it's all right, it's okay, and then rah, you know, this this rage comes up and comes out, and that's part of what your context is, you know, that's that's really why you and Pete have come all the way over from Australia, <laughs> you know, is, is just for the backdrop, just for the safe context to get in touch with it. I mean, there's nothing in society that says, oh, come on, yes, get, get in touch with your rage, that's really good, you know, there's nothing, there's no society, I mean, even when you would go to like churches or we could say religious institutions, it's usually not encouraged. They want you to praise the Lord, but uh, nobody's <laughs> encouraging you to bring your rage up. You know? <laughs> rage Holics Anonymous. <laughs> over there. <laughs> Room 666. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just not, it just doesn't happen. So this is really a context for, in a sense of a safe, secure, loving way to allow it up. And to realize that the purpose is never to hold it against you, you know. Whereas that's why it's kept down, that's why it's so repressed, is because the ego made up a world and made up characters and institutions and everything that basically say, don't, don't ever get in touch with that, don't feel that, and for God's sake, don't ever express it. <laughs> You know, that's the thing. You can come into all kinds of defenses and mental gymnastics to, to guard against it, but it's like, you know, at some point you realize you just can't hold it down anymore. You can't keep it in anymore. You know, even when the world says, you know, don't, don't go too far with getting in touch with this because it will, it will be a burden on the world, it will be a burden on society, it will be something that the world can't handle. And this is a context for saying, yeah, the spirit can handle it. The spirit wants it up and out. So it, it's good that it, even if it seems to be playing out kind of between you and Pete, it's much, much deeper than that. And then you start to feel the, the loving context, almost like a cocoon of safety to let it rise up. And beyond that, there's enormous creative expression. You know, once it's cleared, then, you know, then you really can shine your light, all the gifts of the Spirit can pour through so easily, and, you know, then it's a joy. Life becomes a joy. Thank you. <laughs>